it sometimes hurts my heart. Like it makes me waver in my passion that, you know, maybe the magic is gone. But then I realize that's all in my head, right? I have to, I have to realize that what I believe in, the things that I'm passionate about, isn't that. That aspect of tattooing, this whole fake and gay, you know, part of the culture that's taken over the mainstream aspect of tattooing, you know, the scaredy cat fucking aspect of tattooing that's all based on feelings and stuff, it's got nothing to do with what I do. Right? What I do is completely fucking different. And I need to remember that, right? So this, this video is a little bit of uh, self-talk, right? I think people get tattooed because, you know, there's not a lot of real stuff left in the world. And it's all like a 24-hour news cycle. Nothing, nothing lasts. With tattooing, it's blood, it's pain, it's permanence. And when you get that needle in your skin for the first time, you have to be there. You can't just call it in. You have to sit there and take the pain. And then sit there and heal it. And then you gotta live with the consequences of your of your action. Good morning. Welcome to the East West Podcast with your host, Tori Sumi. Friday, November 1st, 2024. I'm back from hiatus. Uh, I've recovered mostly from my surgery. Ended up with a bit of pneumonia as well while I was recovering, so had a little bit of a shit time, but I'm feeling much better now. Happy to be alive again. Back in the shop working full time. Thought I'd make a little video because it's been, you know, maybe seven weeks since I've done, a, done an episode. I did a live during uh, my recovery, which uh, was fun. It was good times. And I kind of got sick and so I didn't really do anything after that. So I'm enjoying tattooing again. And uh, it's good to be back in the shop and see my mates and my coworkers and my clients and making money again. Surgery ain't cheap. Uh, yeah, so what's been happening with you guys? I'll tell you what. I've been scrolling a lot since I was sick and since I was laid up in bed with a new hip recovering. And look, I know social media is not a actual reflection of reality, but you know, a lot of tattooing and a lot of tattoo culture is reflected on social media and on online presence. And, uh, holy shit, man. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened or where we went wrong, but so much of what I'm seeing Apart from the good tattoos from the top 5% of tattooers, the other 95%, I'm seeing, you know, all this really cringy, and I've said this before, this cringy content, but also this real, like, I, I don't know what happened to the culture, man. It's just, it's become very strange, you know, like, people who have been tattooing for a few years, you know, doing, doing like, this is how tattooing should be videos, you know, and, and it, it's like a... You know, it's like a grocery list of mental illnesses and fucking political ideologies that are trying to be baked into to modern tattooing, right? Which is terrible for fucking business and terrible for the culture. Um, you know, everyone gets tattooed on the spectrum of politics, right? Left, right, whatever. Uh, you know, why you'd want to exclude half of your potential clients by being overly political in your in your tattoo business uh, blows my mind, right? Anyways, enough about that. But, yeah, so, but that, that goes to, you know, show why tattooing used to be a very guarded trade, a very guarded craft, right? There's, you know, everyone throws around this word gatekeeping, like it's a, like it's a bad word. But I think people are starting to see now the, why that was right why 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 we had gatekeepers why there was you know certain mechanisms in place to keep out interlopers and fraudsters and um grifters and people just trying to take 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 and make the most i mean yeah, everyone complains about you know um people getting scammed or overcharging and stuff like this, or, you know, um, men predating on women, uh, like sexual predation on clients, and this kind of thing, right? I mean, most of that stuff, especially the, the grifting and the, and the overcharging and stuff, that's not done by established tattooers. And even the, you know, the creepy stuff, you know, because that stuff gets found out, right? And then no one will go to you, and, you know, and your shop gets a terrible reputation very quickly, right? So, 
that kind of stuff, you know, we had gatekeepers to prevent that kind of stuff, right? Like I've had people come in here from overseas, guest artists, you know, from like, say I had one from Hong Kong, a girl. And she started trying to charge like, you know, $500 an hour for a little fine line stuff. And as soon as I found out, I'm like, you pack your shit, get the fuck out, all right? And you know, that's, that's a mechanism of, of controlling and self-regulating you know, the industry, so you're not ripping off clients, right? Or, you know, I had a fucking creepy dude here that was creeping on girls and stuff, and that lasted a fucking day as soon as I found out he was fucking gone, right? But in this new era of uh, everyone tattooing from home and Airbnb tattooing and, you know, um, shops run by people with no experience, you know, this kind of stuff proliferates more, right? And so the weeding out process that an apprenticeship program has and the weeding out process of... Um, everyone having to go through a serious shop to learn how to tattoo, got those people out of the business, right? Or at least corrected their behavior if they thought like, oh, hey, I'm just here to fucking make money and get as much money from clients as I can, or I'm here to creep on girls, or I'm here to fucking do drugs with my clients, whatever the case may be, right? Gatekeeping was good because it kept those people out of the fucking business. And, you know, prior to, as I said a million times, 2000, you know, year 2000, you, you couldn't really get into tattooing without a, without someone helping you, without a shop, going through a shop, doing an apprenticeship, or at least being assisted by a professional tattooer. And so for the last 25 years or so, things have, you know, tattooing's had this massive boom, and then all, you know, in the last sort of 10 years um, with tattoo schools and YouTube and all these uh, plug and play machines that require no technical ability, it's really changed the face of tattooing, right? And again, you know, it's not all, it's not negative in the sense that there's been a lot of great tattooing. There's been a lot of fresh blood in tattooing, but the culture of tattooing on the whole, you know, again, the top five, 10%, maybe 5%, some great tattooing going on, but there's shops everywhere now. Every little hole in the wall has got a shop doing shitty fine line stuff and shitty realism stuff and shitty everything, right? And it takes away, you know, from the, from the mystery and the powerful beauty of the craft of tattooing, right? By having all these, you know, lack of a word, kids that are just, you know, interloping in tattooing, right? So I'd like to think that I was a gatekeeper for a long time, and I still am, you know, I'm, I regulate my shop pretty heavily. I have a pretty serious apprenticeship program. I don't see gatekeeping as a bad word. I think it's a good thing. Right? I am a proud gatekeeper, let's say, right? Um, you know, and I've had maybe 20 people go through my apprenticeship program and fail, right? Uh, for various reasons. Being idiots, drugs, lying, laziness, just being fuckwits. You know, I've had a lot of people go through and just not last. I mean, some have lasted an hour, some have lasted a year, and everything in between, right? And because of this, because I run such a strict gatekeeping apprenticeship program, you know, it's given me a, a certain reputation, right? That, um, you know, it, which has caused me problems, of course, because nobody likes to be fired and nobody likes to be moved on and nobody likes their ego hurt. Um, you know, and I've had a few people go through the apprenticeship program that are doing very well. I've got my two boys, Pippin and Bonsai, that are five years in this month. And I've got a girl, Katie, who's been in for a year now, who's doing really well. You know, so it's just a mindset thing, right? If you come in with the mindset that you want to serve tattooing and give to tattooing and all these kind of things, you know, then tattooing really works out for you. If you go in there thinking that the world owes you something, uh, I never thought the world owed me something when I started tattooing. You know, I put a lot of effort in traveling and working for people and eating shit, right? A lot of eating shit, man. You want to go learn from good people, you got to eat shit. It's just part of the fucking program, right? Um, you know, and I don't treat my apprentices rough. I never have. But I make them work, right? I make them prove their worth, you know? But because of this, you know, uh, reputation for being hard on apprentices, you know, I've been banned from a convention for it, for uh, making people feel unsafe, right? Because that's the new era of tattooing, right? Feelings, right? So Iron Gate Convention here in Sydney, which is on today, uh, won't let me participate because I make people feel unsafe because I'm a meanie, <laughs> right? <coughs> <coughs> Which is hilarious, right? 
Um, it just goes to show you the culture. I mean, I grew up in the culture of it wasn't fucking safe in tattoo shops, right? Conventions weren't fucking safe, right? That's what tattooing used to be. That's when it was good. That's when it was fun, you know? I'd, I'd much rather have dangerous freedom than, you know, safe slavery, right? So that's just, uh, you know, tattooing, you know, the reason I'm so passionate about this gatekeeping of tattooing and keeping the integrity of tattooing and, and keeping the realness of it is because tattooing saved me, you know, tattooing saved me from myself, right? I was a young man, grew up in the streets, was in a gang, never really got into drugs, but I was into some fucked up shit. And, you know, by, by taking that energy, that young, you know, testosterone fueled energy at that young age and being able to channel it into tattooing, into building a career and into something positive and something creative, you know, it saved me from ending up in jail, ending up fucking dead, ending up fucking whatever other options there are, right? Drugs, you know, tattooing really saved me and it gave me a career and it gave me the ability to have a family and children and have a shop. And I still, you know, the, the things I see going on in tattooing, you know, it sometimes hurts my heart. Like it makes me waver in my passion that, you know, maybe the magic is gone, but then I realize that's all in my head, right? I have to, I have to realize that what I believe in the things that I'm passionate about isn't that, that aspect of tattooing, this whole fake and gay, you know, part of the culture that's taken over the mainstream aspect of tattooing, you know, the scaredy cat fucking aspect of tattooing that's all based on feelings and stuff. It's got nothing to do with what I do, right? What I do is completely fucking different. And I need to remember that, right? So this, this video is a little bit of uh, self-talk, right? I need to remember that what I do is not part of that. And that is not part of who I am, right? And so that's why I'm so passionate because without tattooing, you know, I, I, could, I would be a totally different fucking person, right? So I think it's important for me to preserve tattooing. And that's why the apprentices that I take on, you know, I treat them like family, right? And anyone who's been through my system who's failed knows that I do that as well. Like, I'll be rough on you, but you still come to my house for dinner. I still take you on trips to Japan. You know, I did a lot for people and they still fucked me over, right? Which is why, I'm, you know, it is what it is. I don't get as emotionally involved now as I used to with the people that um, work for me. Cause I used to look at that in a much different light than I do now, right? Now I just, I let people, I give people rope and I let them see what they do with it, right? Whereas before I put a lot more trust and faith in people and I've learned that, you know, that's not how the world works, right? I guess one of my, one of my character flaws is I think that everybody thinks like me, right? It's a blind spot for me. I think everyone's got integrity and honesty and wants to work hard and, you know, all these kind of things, right? It's just stupid of me, right? It's just the way I was raised and so... You know, I, I believe, I think that everyone has these same mentality and the same attributes, which they don't, right? And it took me a long time of uh, managing people to figure that out, right? So, so yeah, I just wanted to get that off my chest. I've been thinking about this stuff a lot while laying in bed watching movies on painkillers. And I really wanted to make this video and talk about it and confess that I am a gatekeeper and why I'm a gatekeeper. And I think it's important to gatekeep all industries that are sacred. You know, and I don't like the word industry, as you know, but say craft, right? I like to, I think we need to protect the craft more. And this is why with the Tabori stuff, I'm very protective of it, right? I'm, you know, very protective. It's, I mean, I'd love to have a business selling Tabori tools and needles and jigs, you know, and it's not out of the realm of possibility sometime in the future. But right now, I don't think that the proliferation of something as sacred as Tabori needs to happen. And I encourage all people that do Tabori to also keep it close to your chest, right? Because every other aspect of tattooing, every other aspect, oh, the cat's out of the bag, you know, it's, it's fucking everywhere, right? And it's, you know, you get these kids coming in and doing tattooing, these theater kids, these, you know, private school kids, these art students. And it's ruining tattooing, right? Everyone's all excited about little fine line, micro outline stuff. Like that's the greatest thing since fucking sliced bread. That's what they think a fucking tattoo is, right? And it's, it's sad. It's not the direction tattooing should be going in. On the mainstream. I mean, the mainstream of tattooing should still be cool fucking tattoos. People should still want 
cool, powerful tattoos. They're not silly little stuff that's going to fall out in six months, right? Anyways, I'm rambling. You get the idea. Um, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, feel free to DM me in the comments or whatever. Uh, DM me or comment. And uh, happy to have a chat with anybody about anything. All right, guys. I'll try and uh, make another video the next week or two. In the meantime, have a great weekend. And uh, I'll see you soon.